Have you, have you, yes. Hey guys! <laughs> I always missed the start. Hello everybody, welcome to Unleash the Video, the show where we talk about the week in mobile news. Introducing the crew, wait, where did everybody go? What just happened? I, I see Alvin, but there's nobody else. Have every, has everybody Hi, abandoned us? <laughs> has, has everybody abandoned us? Totally. Has, oh man. Oh well, let's just see how it goes around the bus. <laughs> so yeah, everybody's busy this week. Yasha is traveling around India. Is he traveling around India? Yeah, he's traveling around yeah, India. Yeah, with an extra P and we're not sure <laughs> how this battery is doing. <laughs> Can we just skip ahead to Symbian News right now because, because on, that, on that Yash note. So Yash, as you guys know, is, was Symbian's last main user and he switched to an Android phone. So... He switched an Android phone like earlier this month, so Nokia announced that the Pure View, Pure View is actually going to be the last Symbian phone. It's not big news as such, but it is the end of an era. Well, when the news came out, everyone on Twitter pretended that they didn't know beforehand <laughs> that the 808 Pure View was the last Symbian phone, and everyone was like, "Oh my God! Oh no! The 808 Pure View is the last <laughs> Symbian phone." Well, of course it is, man. What do you expect? <laughs> I do think you really think that there will be a last last Symbian phone after the 808 Pure View? I think the Pure View was a fitting goodbye for Symbian because it is arguably the most badass phone. I mean, I think, see, Nokia was always pushing for convergence and that was the most convergence phone so far. Yeah. But Even though it has an HDMI port that I've never used and <laughs> it has USB on the go, but I've never used that either because you need the adapter for that. Um, the camera was fantastic, and uh, like I remember when when Symbian when Symbian Bell was announced, and people were like, "Oh my God, you can plug in a mouse, and you can use the mouse on screen, and that's so cool!" And you can plug in an HDMI cable and kind of use it like a mini computer, and that's kind of where Android is right now, and no one's using Android as a mini computer. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you can do these things, but it's still too limited. You know? Uh, in terms of what you can actually do. I mean, why would you want to plug a mouse into your 3.5 inch Nokia N8? What's the point <laughs> of that, right? Um, exactly. So, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's your, what's your biggest uh, memory of Symbian? <sighs> See, the thing is, I own, I own the first Symbian phone that was out there. Now, again, people were arguing with me when I said this. <laughs> But I don't count anything that was not Series 60 as Symbian. So the first Series Technically, Series 80 was Symbian, but I know, but it was it was it was Symbian S60. <laughs> <laughs> so S60, the first S60. You own the was... first Symbian S60 phone. <laughs> yes, I did. It was the 7650. Till date, I regret selling that phone because it was my favorite phone so far. Because. At that time, the fact that you could have a camera on your phone was insane. And I had just moved from from Kuwait to a small town in India called Manipal. And back then, people were still using black and white phones. And the 7650 hadn't been released in India yet because they just wanted to release the 3650 with a memory card. Uh, I just had 4 MB of memory on, that, on the 7650. <laughs> but damn it, I used that phone like no other. I took... I think I took more pictures with that phone than I have taken with any other phone so far. And, cons and knowing me, that's saying a lot. <laughs> they were terrible, terrible VGA quality square-ish pictures, but... Um, hey, it's what yeah, Instagram is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, my, my Symbian history, I started with the N73, then I went to the N82, then I went for the 5800. Yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> um, then after that, I got so fed up with the 5800 that I got a Satu, a Sony Ericsson Satu. Oh my god, that was way worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thinking that the double the memory and the faster processor will probably fix it, but no, because Sony decided to put a stupid custom skin on top of Symbian. <laughs> I remember I I was reviewing the N8 and I said, hey, let me get this Ashio and put it against the N8 for a camera comparison. And I remember showing Yash the Ashio and we both 
felt so sad when we were using it. We were like, wow, this phone is slow. Like, jeez. <laughs> And I think after the session, that's when Sonia Ericsson decided to stop making Symbian phones. And, and so I got fed up with the session as well. The entire S60 V5 era basically made me reconsider my plans to get more Symbian phones. But I persisted and I got the P990i second hand. Which uh, ran I, I got an the... offshoot of Symbian. Got yeah, I got, I got the p 800 when it was, um, well, I got second hand for cheap, and like I got a really stupid, horrible piece from this guy who sold it to me, and Bluetooth didn't work, and the battery only lasted for six hours. But I remember how impressed the people were. Battery only lasted for six hours. The Xperia S's battery only lasts for four hours. <laughs> how much have you progressed in technology, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean that phone was was, uh, it's kind of sad because, I mean. All these companies tried their hand at touchscreen phones and stuff with Symbian. And by the way, the UIQ came along a lot earlier than any other touchscreen mobile OS. Yeah, I mean, Windows Mobile. It, you know, I wonder, I wonder if if Sony bought back the P900 form factor today, would it do well, or would it would it just be? Mind you, the P900 and up to the P990, they were huge because they, they were, were so huge. so thick. It's like, but, but I'm thinking, suppose suppose they make like a simple phone of like you know this size with another flap that can open up. They were this thick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, we, and we loved it. We were we were the coolest kids in town <laughs> with that phone. I was like, yeah, look at my P900 man. But I think that my biggest symbiote memory. Uh, I eventually ended up with an E5, bought just a week before February 11th, and <laughs> and I lived with that for a while. But my biggest symbiote memory is <sighs> there are too many memories. There are too many memories. Yeah, I mean, no, my favorite symbiote memory is out of memory. Show some applications and try it. <laughs> Your favorite memory was out of memory. <laughs> that I remember that. Oh man, I used to hate that bug so much, especially when I was I was reviewing. Thankfully, by that time I already had a website, so I was getting review devices. And I remember, I remember how excited I was to try the N97, and then I tried it, and I was like, Oh my God, what is not yet thinking? And uh, that phone went hit on with the iPhone 3GS. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Jeez, what? Uh, In the uh, end, the last Simeon phone I have left is this. See, I bought the Pure View, and I love the Pure View. <laughs> <laughs> did so, I? Did I? Did you try the Pure View with um, with the latest feature pack two? No, I reviewed it when it was on feature pack one, and obviously, I did not like feature pack one. <laughs> yeah, feature pack two. I mean, feature pack two finally bought Simeon. To where it should have been when the iPhone 3GS was out. Yeah. Was out. In That's... 2008. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it took four years to, and 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 that's how Symbian really deserved where it is now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of an era. I mean, who'd have thunk back then that? Symbian was gonna go down because <laughs> everybody was using a Symbian phone. There was no other choice before the iPhone was out. Seriously, but I think it's... that the iPhone showed all of us a better way. Uh, <laughs> so, so you know, uh, yesterday, yesterday, my 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 Lumia 920 was lying around at, on on my bed, and I was shooting this video, and um, I I had to check the time, so I went to it and I tapped on it. <laughs> And I was like, "Oh my God! I, I what is wrong with me? See that the the that that one thing from the N9 was so well done. I'm shocked that Nokia hasn't annoyed Microsoft to implement it in Windows Phone. It's just a tap to wake up thing. That was brilliant. And being able to glance at the phone lying on the table to see the time. You don't even yeah. need to tap it, you know, because it just sits there showing you the time all the time. Whereas on on the uh, on Windows Phone, you still have to swipe down. You can still see the time, 
But if you want to see the battery life or anything, you have to swipe down to look at those icons, and it's it's the opposite uh, of version. Should... This, this is a third party app. <laughs> hey, I I kind of have that going on with Windows Phone. Look at that! Oh wow! But oh come on, you need to turn on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Let's well, move on. Speaking of um, speaking of Migo and um, and well, actually speaking of the pure view, there is a rumor that uh, by The Verge, you know how we love The Verge, they come <laughs> up with good stuff, um, that Nokia might actually <laughs> release, now this is what everyone on the internet was saying, Nokia will release a real PureView Windows phone um, Aha. later this year. Aha. So, <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean that everyone agrees that the Lumia 820, that 920 doesn't actually have a PureView, isn't actually deserving of the PureView You see, name? the fanboys have all gone home, so now we can finally bask in the reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still think they shouldn't have called it pure view. They should have called it like, what, what was the name we came up with? We came up with a really cool name, pure motion. No. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, pure motion will actually work because pure what, pure it, video, pure video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but you see. So, if you call something pure view and it still churns out images that are clearly noisy and look weird in low light, then I don't think that it's really deserving of the label, no matter what. Uh, it's Nokia the thing. Is. The thing is, if Nokia had announced the 920 first and called it pure view, and then announced the 41 megapixel camera on the 808, that would have been fine. Then people have been like, okay, that's pure view evolving, but Nokia announced the 41 megapixel sensor on the 808 first, and, and everyone was like, "Wow, 41 megapixels! Wow!" I remember. I I seriously remember. I mean, I spoke about this in the in our post uh, la- earlier this week, but I, I remember when Nokia said 41 megapixels at MWC when they announced last week, uh, last year, last week. Um, I was. <laughs> It feels like it was last week. Um, <laughs> I remember just standing there and going like, whoa, did they just make a typo or was that... I mean, it's 14 megapixels, right? It's, it's 14. <laughs> and now today it just seems like, oh, 41. Oh. And, <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's a thought. Um, you see, it's very easy to appreciate the... Pure view technology in the 808. It's harder to appreciate the technology that's in the 920. It's not that because it's bad technology, but because in order to see what the 920 can do, you either need to be really skillful at taking low light photographs, because if, even even if you take a 920 and you don't know anything about photography, your low light photographs will still turn out like crap because you aren't managing the light properly. And and in order to appreciate the optical image stabilization, you actually need to watch a video you need to watch a video shot by the 920. And yeah. the thing is, the 808's image quality is clear for everyone to see. So, you know, um, in a sense, I suppose the reason why people are not so blown away by what the 920 can do is because there really isn't that many opportunities where the 920 can actually show off what it can do. Also, many people take pictures, but very few people take videos. Yeah. I mean, I I love taking pictures. If you ask anybody who has met me, I, chances are they've seen me take pictures of everything around me. <laughs> and Even what what am I like when when I went to Vegas? A friend of mine joked that if anything by chance happens to Vegas, they can recreate it because of my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I took that many pictures of it. And and, um, and because the is it video. It's very hard to shoot video that people want to watch. I mean, when we shoot video, we actually plan what we want to shoot beforehand before actually shooting that video. And the 920 and shooting video with a smartphone in general, you you don't really plan. You just go go for it, you know. And that doesn't make it very worthwhile for people to watch because that it tends to be videos of cats. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come back to that cat point later on something else. <laughs> But everybody remember that hat point, right? Um, so, so yeah, and and there's also the fact that you can't upload straight to YouTube from a Windows phone, which is apparently Google's fault. But 
it's still at this point sad. I don't know whose fault is it anymore. Nobody knows whose fault <laughs> it is anymore. <laughs> Just blame somebody and stick with it. That's what I that's what I do. Uh Oh well. But Nokia also announced their Q4 results uh, officially, and they have finally, after Made two years, turned a profit. It's five hundred and eighty-five million dollars in profit, with four point four million Lumia phones sold, and I should note, two point two million Symbian phones still sold. But they have also said that this is the last quarter where they will actually report Symbian sales because after this, there will be no more meaningful Symbian sales. <laughs> so, I mean, see, just, let, let's just say there's still one million people that buy a Symbian phone next quarter. Will they... How will Nokia report that now? Will they spread it under... You see, they don't report sales of the N9. They have never reported sales of the N9. But I don't think the N9 is selling in the millions. Do you? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, will they have a separate category now? I, I don't know. We'll have to see what they do. But yeah. um, but there's still I mean there's still 2.2 million Symbian phones being sold. That is, I mean I wish we had Steve from All About Symbian on, on our show today because because he would he would drive that point home because I think in emerging markets like India and um, well. South America and a couple other places. Symbian is still actually doing pretty well. I still see, I know this is going to shock you guys, but I still see more Symbian phones in an airport or in public transport over here than I see Android phones. I still see more Symbian phones. I, I've actually seen quite a lot of N97 still being used. <laughs> Have the owners not shown the N97 out of the bus yet? I, I just think these guys just don't read our vlog <laughs> or read any vlogs for that matter. Um, I just think they're just, you know, they're happy with the way it works and they're chilling with Symbian and but you for see, them, in their mind, in their mind, the, Android will be the, the next thing step is, forward. The thing is, if you haven't tried anything else, you yeah. can't say that. <laughs> you can't see, like, say that you're happy with Symbian. Like when when Zoma I got a CJ was a Symbian blog was was a Nokia only Symbian blog. I thought Symbian was the bee's knees. I was like, hey man, <laughs> you do whatever you want with your iPhone. I got my NA. I'm the coolest guy in the world. And then one day we went multi brand and I tried the iPhone CGS and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I defended this and this and this about Symbian when clearly there's so much better out there. And at that time, I tried Android, and Android sucked because we had the X10 from Sony for review. It was the slowest, or, <laughs> the slowest phone in the history. <laughs> I, I don't know if there was a competition between the Symbian running Satio, Satio and the um, uh, Android 2.3, 1. 2.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.6. 1.6. 1.6. Yeah, 1.6 running um, Xperia X10. That would be an interesting match to watch because cause they were both terrible <laughs> slow phones. Uh, but since then, I mean, wow, Android has gone way ahead. Symbian has taken slow steps, of course, until it was eventually killed off. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my only worry for Nokia right now is that um, for a lot of people, Android still seems like the next evolution next step in evolution from Symbian because a lot of people who use Symbian phones right now will see the familiar grid of icons on an Android phone and they'll think oh you know what this is the same thing I was using before and they will get it whereas with Windows yeah. phone yeah I mean it's just for people who don't know what Symbian is or don't know what Android is they just look at that and people don't like change so when they see the icons of Windows phone versus the nice little and, grid of and like I said before when it comes to Windows phone you really need to use it with your own data to in order to appreciate it. And that, for the, I mean, for us as phone reviewers, we can try it for free and and then we write about it and we talk about how we feel about it and then we send it back. But for the man in the street, they can't. The, the phone yeah. they are going to buy is the phone that they are going to stick with for two years. So, yeah. um, so Windows Phone is a huge investment for these people. Especially Windows Phone 8. Like, I really, really, really cannot recommend a Windows Phone 7 device. I just, I cannot. I, I, and everyone knows this. I mean, I cannot recommend a Windows Phone 7 device because it was just too limiting. And at least now, 
with the Lumia phones if they do get the ability to share over Bluetooth with that app. Um, I mean, come on. Is, but it's and and this is the most annoying thing about it. For Windows Phone Seven users, there's still question marks everywhere because nobody knows when the update is coming around. Will I get Bluetooth sharing or not with the with the separate app? What can I can I not do? I mean, I have a phone running Windows Phone Seven Point Eight, and it is basically the same as Seven, except that you can resize the icons. The Bluetooth share app is not available for me for some weird reason. The ringtone maker app is not available for some weird reason, and ah, uh, it is. Uh, but Windows Phone 8, as you've probably read on our site already, is completely different, even though it looks exactly the same. And it's shocking. I know it's shocking to to um to listen to, but but like Alan said, if you try out a Windows Phone 8 device, chances are you're going to be very happy with it. I'm very happy with my Lumia phone, and I haven't gone back to my Android phone except if I have to check my email. For which, <laughs> for which Gmail is still much better on an Android phone, but um, but uh, yeah. Oh well, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. So that is Apple not announced their financial results as well, and they have made fifty-four point five billion dollars in revenue. They sold forty-seven point eight million iPhones. Compare that to four point four million Lumias. Um. <laughs> And 22.9 million iPads. So, I just realized that we shouldn't have put those two titles so close to each other because now it doesn't look so great for Nokia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I I think that earlier this week, um, someone said on on Twitter or something that not Apple's and Samsung's uh, results. Uh, I, oh yeah, it was an article on all about Windows dot com, but um, <laughs> Apple and Samsung's results show the the huge mountain that Nokia and Microsoft have to climb in order to to establish Windows Phone as a significant third choice in, in the smartphone market because IDC today also released uh, its uh, fourth quarter 2012 um, results for, for the top five um, smartphone vendors and the first and number one is of course Samsung I mean we all know that um, the second is Apple. The third is Huawei, which is a Chinese mobile company. Wow. Um, Are you sure you're pronouncing it right? Is it Huawei or is it... It is Huawei. Damn it, I can never pronounce it. I'm Chinese. I can't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Um, the f- number four, surprisingly, is Sony Mobile. So they're doing okay. Oh, way to go, Sony. <laughs> and number five is ZTE, another Chinese mobile smartphone maker. So... So China is where all companies need to be, basically. Yeah, and in the fourth quarter, ZTE sold 9.5 million smartphones. They shipped 9.5 million smartphones. Wow, so, I think I, I think I'll have to pass by their booth at MWC this time instead of instead of skipping over their booth completely like last and, year. <laughs> and even Sony, whom most of us consider a pretty small, uh, you know, handset vendor, they sold nine. They they shipped 9.8 million smartphones. So wow. they are actually doing fine on Android. They are the in, in fact, apart from Samsung, <laughs> they are the only <laughs> top tier Android smartphone manufacturer making money. Wow, that blew my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um so yeah, Nokia is somewhere in the others list. Um that also includes uh. HTC in it. So <laughs> So the world has changed. Um. <laughs> these these results, man. I mean, you can never predict these results because <laughs> ZTE really wow. Yeah, ZTE. Jeez. So <coughs> similarly, sorry. Similarly, in um in India, uh, Nokia ha- and even Samsung has a lot of competition from local manufacturers like Micromax and um, there's a brand called Carbon Mobiles with a K. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> and um, there's there's Spice, which is another. It's a it's a carrier, and it's also a. I don't know what Spice is, but it's it's a company that sells phones now. Just, and, just um, to let you know, on, on the team WhatsApp group, sometimes someone will bring up a carbon whatever phone or tablet or a Micro Max this and that, and I'm always like, why why would I look at it now? Like why why would I buy such a phone? And then. <laughs> I know, and it's shocking because you know the other day I was in the store um, 
just looking at the prices of Xbox games because I was considering buying a new game. Then I saw the price and I said, hey, I can't afford this. So <laughs> at that same time, there was some, there was this, this young guy and his, like, I think 15-year-old guy and his dad who walked into the store, and they were looking at, they were looking to buy a new Android tablet, and they asked for HCL tablets, which was another Indian brand. Um, and again, I was shocked because I was like, wow, why is he buying this tablet when he could buy so much other... Because I mean, tablets are other. useless. So well, that's, that's another thing that we will have coming up this week. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, this guy, really, he bought the HCL tablet, and he was very happy with it. And then I saw the price of the HCL tablet, and I was like, huh, you know, I can kind of understand why they wanted this tablet, because for that price... There's nothing much else out there, so yeah, I I, I think that's always the the case. But um, so, so bottom line, <laughs> lots of competition. Yeah. Um, you see, yeah. Samsung is so threatened. At least they consider these these players a, a threat that they had to release the Galaxy grandparents. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let's not start that. You know, the most read thing on our site this week was just the announcement post. Like, I don't have any, I didn't take any pictures because the event was too noisy and the lighting was blue color. Who puts blue color lighting at an event with phone? Samsung. Uh, so, so, um, so I couldn't. And he's frozen up. Wow, that was that was strange. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Samsung. I will not complain about lighting ever again. Jeez, that's the first time that's ever happened to me, and I got I got kicked out of my own. <laughs> okay, okay. I hope it's still on the air. Otherwise, yeah, we're yeah. just talking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the most red thing that was scary, man. <laughs> I just got kicked out of. The, okay, so. Uh, so the most weird thing on our site this week was that the announcement post that the Galaxy Grand was announced, and this is the price in India. And I was like, holy crap, a lot of people want this phone just because it's a tablet and it's cheap. Well, not cheap, but cheap-ish. And um, another website that I will not name from, from India also did a, a video, and their video has like a gazillion views now, and I'm thinking, shit, I should have recorded it, that stupid video in the terrible lighting. Ugh. But, I mean, everyone's... You never know what people want. Like even no matter how many phones we review, you never know what people want. <laughs> I mean, I thought the Galaxy Grand was nice, but apparently people really want this phone, at least in <laughs> India. So let's move on. <laughs> um, we're going off on tangents today. I'm getting kicked out by mentioning Samsung. Please don't kick me out again. Um, should we talk about how unlocking mobile phones is now illegal in the U.S.? Yeah, that's... So... Unlocking mobile phones is now illegal in the U.S. Uh, let, me, let me expand on that. Unless you get permission from a carrier to unlock your phone, technically it is now illegal to unlock your mobile phone. I don't even know, I don't even know where to start with this, but... Well, <laughs> let's just say that here in Asia, it's not a problem because your phone is probably not locked to any carrier. Um, in Singapore, by law, all phones have to be so unlocked. And I so hope that I really hope that the, the I mean I hope that's the situation in in India. I hope that the U.S. rule does not catch on over here. But and and I mean, well, if you live if you do live in the U.S., um, there is always there's still a choice because you can always buy an unlocked phone uh, outright without a contract or anything. So you, you would buy that phone just like any other piece of consumer electronics from Amazon or something. And so um, it's only if you buy a subsidized phone, like if you buy an iPhone for 199 US dollars from an AT&T store and it's locked to AT&T. Under this new rule, um, 
you can't unlock the phone unless you get permission from AT&T, which won't give you that permission. So, <laughs> so um, essentially, I'm not sure how great of an impact this is because, mind you, ripping DVDs technically is illegal as well. <laughs> come on, right? <laughs> Uh, let's not let's not go there. <laughs> um, so that is our major news. We're really missing out on proper major news the last couple of weeks. I mean, we're just pulling uh, in stuff now. But the one-liners are interesting. The week. one-liners are interesting. Let's move on to one-liners. HTC thinks that your phones nowadays are too big, so they released a mini phone for your. Phone. <laughs> I didn't even complete so that. if you bought, <laughs> if you buy an HTC butterfly in China, right? They are giving you. This thing, this thing. <laughs> they are giving you this thing for free called the HTC Mini. And uh, what the HTC Mini is, it's a mini phone for your big phone. So if you, if you made the specific decision to buy the HTC Butterfly, which is a 5-inch 1080p phone, HTC thinks that you might not want to look at that brilliant screen so often. <laughs> uh, and just... sometimes you might want to make calls with this little mini phone that has a square screen, a number pad with round buttons, mind you, and a sort of tapered curved back. So it isn't exactly a phone. It is a Bluetooth accessory that pairs with yeah, your phone. Yeah, it's like a Bluetooth accessory. Like, like and, a smart and it watch. looks, it looks but really ugly though. But it's in the form factor <laughs> of a mini phone, and it looks like it came out of the nineteen eighties. <laughs> so I mean, if you if you told me last year that that phones nowadays are going to be so big that people will need to carry a mini phone, <laughs> so if your <laughs> phone <laughs> is too big for you, now you have an option. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. Um, I mean, uh, you spend all that money on a phone that you don't want to use that much. That you just want to leave sitting in your pocket so that you can I'm use just, this mini phone with it. I'm just worried that this will catch on. <laughs> and before you know it, everybody's carrying on phones from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> to use their phones from 2013. I mean, oh boy. Your phone's so I mean, big, you need a mini phone to make calls with it. So the theme for today is, you never know what the hell is going to happen in mobile. <laughs> Clearly. Because, <laughs> oh, jeez. So yeah, that's what we think of the HTC Mini. You know, I, I, it, as funny as it is, I wouldn't mind one at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, hey, hey, what's up? How's it going? Uh, all right. Which phone so, do I use now? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let's let's calm down. <laughs> Would it be even funnier if the mini phone fit inside the big phone? So. Oh my God, that would be perfect. <laughs> There's an idea. You should patent that right now before somebody else does. I mean. <laughs> uh, Okay, okay, I'm, I'm coming down. I'm coming. You have Russian doll phone. No, stop! <laughs> Inside the mini phone, that was a nano phone. <laughs> you just, you know, this is gonna happen someday, right? You know, someday, someone's gonna make this phone that you're talking about. It'll probably be Asus because of the pad phone. They'll, they'll make like a pad, a mini pad phone. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Let's move on to LG. <laughs> so, remember how we were talking last week about how awesome the LG Optimus G is? Well, it's already outdated, because now there's an LG Optimus G Pro, but it might be only coming to Korea, but uh, it has a 1080p screen, of course. And a 1.7 gigabyte. The size of that screen S is 5 inches. 5 inches. <laughs> Five inches is the norm nowadays, that's what she said. But um, yeah, so now if you have an Optimus G, it's outdated, sorry for you, sucks to be you. Go get the I, Optimus G Pro. I, I long for the days when adding Pro on the back of phones meant that the phone had a hardware keyboard. 
No, it doesn't uh, mean that anymore. The good old days. <laughs> now it's just the same phone but better. Like it's like adding I to a phone name used to mean a better version of that phone. Like you know the six six eight zero I or something. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Yeah. I don't think they can add I to anything anymore after yeah. the iPhone now. But <laughs> even if they do that today and they release the Lumia 920i, people will be like, oh my god, they're carving Apple. Anyway, given most manufacturers' naming schemes, it would be quite weird to add an I, like Samsung Galaxy S3i. <laughs> now, it, now it's mini, the new cool thing to have around <laughs> mini. It's, oh, even well. HTC has caught on. <laughs> Uh, so, so that's what we think of the LG Optimus G Pro. I mean, I don't, is the Optimus G released in in Singapore? Because nope. it's not released in Asia. It's not. Um, it's not released in, in Australia either. I think I, I have to ask Mike about that. But I don't, I don't know where the Optimus G is released, but it's out there somewhere. And now I don't know if the Optimus G Pro will be released everywhere because at least over here when LG um, bought the Optimus v- Vu? View? View? View. I suck at pronouncing things this week for some weird reason, but the Optimus View. Um, they they already announced the Optimus View 2 in Korea. So when they announced, the, when they released the View here, people were like, why are you releasing the View when there's the View 2? That's LG for you. Yeah. Alright, let's move on to other news. Um, there's an app called Windows Android. So creative. <laughs> There's an app called Windows Android that lets you run Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich on your Windows computer. And this is also something that was read a lot on our site this Isn't week. Isn't that the same concept as BlueStacks? Um, but this will let you run Android natively. That's the only difference, apparently. How do you do that? Because... I don't know. I tried to figure it out and I couldn't. My computer science degree is staring at me in my face right now. I, <laughs> I, I, I read into it and I figured, oh, you know what? This is, it's too silly to figure out. I'm just gonna post about it. Well, if you <laughs> if you ever wanted to run Android 4.0 on your PC, because, well, perhaps you don't know how Android 4.0 looks like, or you are too cheap to buy an Android <laughs> tablet. I'm sure you can get. Sandwich. I'm sure you can get a pretty cheap Android ice cream ice cream sandwich. Right? This is right out your alley. <laughs> I I still don't know why anyone will want to run Android 4.0. I mean, maybe if you could run it in like a window and play games. Uh, but that's about. But you see, you need to pay for those games. Why would you buy games for an emulator that runs on your PC? <laughs> and the the Google Play Store doesn't detect your doesn't detect this installation because it doesn't ah, exist. So, so there's no Play Store, which so means you just that have to. Implement, you have to. Siloed. <coughs> yeah. Siloed. Um, <coughs> siloed. We call it siloed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's that's it. Let's move on. Oh, tablet news! Yay! Okay. Um, I'm actually not yaying about this part. I'm yaying about the next bit of news after this. But let's talk about this first. Uh, Sony released the announced the Xperia Tablet Z this week. It's a 10-inch tablet that doesn't have the same wedge shape as the previous yeah. Sony tablets. Um, this and is just a, a slat. A very s- thin yeah. slat. Thinner than the iPad mini, apparently. Yeah. I'm, I don't know how Sony managed that, but way to go. And it's got a great <laughs> screen as well because it has a 1080p display on that 10.1-inch panel. And it apparently has NFC in it, so if you have an Xperia device, you will be, and I suppose any Android device, hopefully, um, you'll be able to actually send stuff across uh, from your smartphone to your tablet. And have you have you ever seen anybody in the wild using the Sony Xperia tablets from before? Yes, um, there are a few. I've seen a few tablet S. So it's, Wow, um, I haven't seen any tablets at all. I mean, I really like that whole red shape because I thought it was yeah. different enough. But I don't know how practical it would be to but, buy a case um, for it. But that wet shape also means that the tablet is very awkward to use in portrait mode. That, no, uh, but it kind of felt like a book. That was the whole thing. You can, you can but use it's it like tall a book then... because it's a wide screen thing, so it's really tall and it feels like a surface or something. <laughs> like a surface or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
So, but so yeah, now it's really thin, and yeah, I, don't, packs, I hope it's released. This packs yeah, yeah. some serious power as well, because it has a quad-core 1.5 GHz processor. Um, the camera, Sony has put, apparently, a good camera in this tablet, um, unlike every other tablet out there. I still don't know how it makes sense to take photographs with a tablet, but if you ever wanted to, the shots from the Tablet Z might not look that bad. I, like... You know, I was I was very disappointed in my sister for the first time in years this this yesterday, because she took pictures with her iPad and sent it to me. Um, she took pictures of her, of her kids with her iPad. She's like, "Oh, look at how pretty my kids are in this outfit." And I was like, "What did you take that picture of it?" And she's like, "My iPad." And I was like, "Oh no, no, not my own <laughs> sister, no." <laughs> but I think it's just because because it's it's convenient and it's a giant screen, so people assume. By It'll the way, nice I've picture. seen people use tablets to make calls and use WhatsApp and <laughs> and also to use <laughs> like phone apps. So people use tablets for anything. Um which is uh right right tool for the right job people. <laughs> I I have seen a guy in a coffee shop. I was sitting at the coffee shop working and um I saw this guy using his tablet as his phone. With a Bluetooth accessory. Yeah. So his tablet was lying around. And he was like, "Yo, what's up? How's it going, homie?" Well, the Indian version of that, but, but that's what he was doing. And I was like, "Wow, I've never seen that happening." Yeah. Before. But hey. Uh, so, you do you think this will be released anytime soon? I guess, but it runs Android four point one, <laughs> so you would be waiting for an upgrade again. And apparently, it follows the same sort of design language as the Xperia Z. So if you get an Xperia Z and a Tablet Z, they will look like they are made for each other. And you can probably do the whole um, get the little phone out of the big tablet sort of thing. If you are watching this show and you do get the Xperia Z and the Tablet Z, please let us know who you are so that we could talk to you. Because so that you're probably the only Sony fan. I mean, yeah. the only insane like like Al is a Sony fan, but you're insane. I need to talk to you, whoever you are. <laughs> anyway, my Xperia S is up for sale. So. Oh no! <laughs> it's so pretty. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So yeah, if you want to buy an Xperia S from Singapore, Al, Al is your man. <laughs> Whichever side he's on the screen. Um, well, now, next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this was hilarious. Because when I wrote the title of this, I really didn't think they ever made another Android tablet before. But Hyundai, the car manufacturer, <laughs> just launched an Android tablet. Seriously. Now, the second I posted this, I had three people on... Well, not three people. I had one person and three people join in with him. Uh, on Twitter, argued with me, saying, Oh my god, man, how can you call yourself a blogger? You never heard of Hyundai making Android tablets before? And I was like, no. I haven't heard of no. Hyundai making Hyundai Android. makes taxis. They make cars. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure they make very nice cars. I will give you that, Hyundai. I'm sure you, they make very nice, like, home accessories. I don't know what the heck Hyundai makes, but yeah, that's fine. And I even said on the post that the Android tablet specs were not that bad. They were pretty good for that price. Um... But, my God, man, the, the people that argue with me on Twitter are like, no, 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 how can you so call yourself a blogger? I'm like, I'm a blogger, I'm not a journalist, I can say yeah. whatever I want about this type of... I mean, oh, you crazy people. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so, yeah, Hyundai. Hyundai launched an Android tablet. It Stretch actually uses okay. an Exynos chip. So. Yeah, it uses a Samsung Exynos chip, so that means it should be pretty decent, actually. Hmm. Yeah, well... You'll never but see it. So. It's a 7 inch screen, um, and it actually looks a lot like a Samsung. It looks a lot like Samsung. It's <laughs> probably the, like. Look, look, look at the back of it. I mean, just. Okay, wait, wait. So if, if Samsung's upcoming Galaxy Note 8 inch looks like this, does that mean Hyundai copied Samsung or Samsung, Samsung copied, copied Hyundai? Samsung copied Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> because this tablet looks suspiciously like the <laughs> image of that Galaxy Note 8 that's supposed to turn at MWC. So, complete with the Samsung looking physical home button. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, oh, Samsung curved Hyundai. <laughs> So Samsung copied Hyundai now. Where where does it end, Samsung? No, I'm just kidding. 
Okay, let's move on to Firefox OS. This is something that you got excited about, Al. Yeah, so um, this week, uh, Mozilla, um, in partnership with a little phone maker called Geek's Phone, I'm not cheating, they are really called <laughs> Geek's Phone, um, they launched a, a couple of developer phones for Firefox OS. So for, an, for anyone who's not familiar with, Fire, with what Firefox OS is, it's basically Mozilla's attempt to build a smartphone operating system just like how Ubuntu is trying to build a smartphone operating system, and Yola is trying to build a smartphone operating system, and Tizen is trying to build a smartphone operating system. Firefox <laughs> OS is in that same group. So um, I can sense a trend going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, they, they, they launched two phones um, called the Tion and the Peak. So, Tion, K-E-O-N, and the Peak, which is like the Peak. Uh, so, um, the Tion <laughs> is a is a very low-end device, while the Peak is slightly higher-end. The hardware isn't very interesting, to be honest. Um, they are just slap phones. One comes in orange, the other comes in white. You won't be able to buy it, I guess, unless you are a developer. Um, but what this shows is, is at least that Firefox OS is growing somewhere, because this is the first. Um, this is this would be considered a milestone for the company. And I like circular icons. Firefox OS has circular icons, so uh, <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> I should mention that circular icons are not the same as circular icons because those are ugly. But but these are pretty. They're not exactly circular, but they're pretty okay. So um, it still remains to be seen uh, whether this amounts to anything, but Mozilla with Firefox OS is trying to position themselves as a smartphone OS for budget phones, so we, and they seem to believe a great deal in HTML5 and web technologies, so... It'll uh, be interesting to see, I mean, and, and yeah. they're targeting China again, so... Yeah, well, everyone's targeting China because they have no chance in the US. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, these Americans, they're so picky, man. Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I just think, you know, the, you know, the iPhone has taken over America. Every 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 time I go there, I see more iPhones and less any other phones. But all of my geek friends from America are all using Android phones, so there is hope. So there is hope that somehow, at some point, um, there will be other operating systems going around. Oh, well. Also, um, this... We, uh, Ubuntu had an interview with Engadget, and they revealed that when they come to market in 2013, they will not have an app store. So the wow, first Ubuntu yeah. phone will <laughs> ship without an app store. So I feel like someone's done that before. Yeah, I wonder who, but <laughs> that seemed to be five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh well. All right, let's move on to Twitter. Twitter did something silly this week. They launched a new service called Wine. Kind of, I'm sure I've heard the, the Wine name used by Nokia before. Nokia, Nokia Vine. Remember Nokia that? Vine. Um, it was the live blog successor. It just and they and they canned that project. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyway, so no, Twitter launched this <laughs> thing called Wine, which is basically um a loopable video sharing app where you can create like six second videos which yeah. are loopable. And now, it's an iPhone only app for now. It's only released for iPhone, yes. And it's kind of like the same thing that um, Cinemagraph is on the Lumia phones. But this where, is this is just can... video. Um, so it's not necessarily a still GIF. Yeah, so like on the, that's my dog. So you can create a video like this with, with Vine where you can have a loopable, oh, I miss my dog. So, so you can create a loopable video that you can play and share with your friends. But the thing is, this has already been done before with an app called Cinemagram for iOS. Um, who And they just updated their app to support video this this like today, <laughs> to take on Vine. Uh, so I'm not sure what the big deal about this is, but I assume it's doing pretty well because suddenly a lot of my iPhone-owning friends are all on that service. 
And I just checked it out yesterday to see how many people were on it, and quite a lot were sharing videos of random stuff. Random stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you like making six-second loopable videos, check out Vine. You see, video is hard again to continue the theme. <laughs> um, video is hard because imagine if Instagram supported video. I mean, oh, it God. would just it would just <laughs> Take all the the. It, it, it. First, exactly. people don't know how exactly. to use it. They don't know how to make it worthwhile because then you just have again videos of cats. I mean, <laughs> um, that's all you have. A lot of cats, and it's not that I don't like cats, but um, dogs are better. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is. You actually need to think about video when you capture video, whereas an image is just a snapshot. You just exactly, and that I mean, moment in time. at least with Cinemagram on uh, on iPhone, it's a it's a separate app. Um, with that, you can actually add filters, if I remember correctly. And by the way, Cinema and... Cinema Dram came before Cinema Draft, so let's get that very very clear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There was only one person who didn't know that in my in my set of Cinemagram, but um, the Cinemagram was was very cool because it allowed you to. It was the first app to do this, to be honest. At least the first app that I noticed. But loading and like loading your friends' video videos or gifs would take forever unless you were on a 3G connection. And uploading your own Cinemagram would take forever. And not editing, a 3G connection in Singapore, by the way. Not a 3G. Oh, no, no, no. No, Singapore. Ah. Okay. Somebody else that we follow actually went to Singapore this week, and we were both laughing at his <laughs> experiences in Singapore <laughs> and the, the terrible 3G there. Um, let's move on to Samsung's results. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason I put this last in our one liners is because this is the results for the whole of Samsung. Um, so it's not the mobile division. Not just the mobile division. So, they so made it's also the refrigerator and the air conditioning division. Yep. <laughs> um, so they reported an 8.27 billion profit, out of which they haven't actually reported how much the phones are. Um, actually, they, they said that they have strong sales of their tablets yeah, and smartphones. Strong sales of especially um, the Galaxy S3 and the Gal uh, Galaxy Note 2. Which sold, which sold 30 million for the S3 and, and 5 million for the Note 2. So, let's wow. just put it back in perspective. The entire Lumia range sold 4.4 million. This wow. one single plasticky, glossy, crappy Samsung phone <laughs> sold 30 million. See, that's what I'm saying. We clearly have no idea. We should just close the blog down today. <laughs> like, this is the end of our blog because we don't know what people want anymore because people are just buying stuff. Well, you know what? To be honest, um, at least if I were to recommend a phone, I mean, you know what I think of Samsung, but at the same time, if I was to recommend a phone to somebody who I know does not know anything about tech, who just wants a phone that will work, um, wants the latest Android updates and kind of wants the ability to you know play with all the different features of a phone. It's hard not to recommend Samsung because they do have Papa Play, they do have all those silly little features that average consumer loves, and they do get Android updates earlier than anybody else. Yeah, the Galaxy S two is getting Jelly Bean in Singapore exactly. right now. So exactly so. It's kind of hard to not recommend their phones when that's the reputation that they have. And, and it kills me. And you know, they... the S2 started on gingerbread. So, two major software upgrades now, exactly. which is great. Sony, do better. Seriously. Sony, you have no idea. Like, you have no <laughs> idea. HTC, you kind of have an idea, but you know you're not being, you're not updated at all. You're just like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Sony has been trying to fix the software upgrade situation since the X10. Remember, <laughs> remember how long the X10 was stuck on 2.1. Oh. I mean, oh God. <laughs> and the reason Yash still uses a Symbian phone until recently was the X10 because I lent it to him for review and he hated it so much. I mean, 
Uh, yeah, so so that's the problem. I mean, other manufacturers, like look at look at LG. With LG, you literally have no idea if you're gonna get an update or not. You have no idea at all. And flip side, with with iOS, you know that you are gonna get the update at least for three years. You will get updates on your iPhone or your iPad. Where with Windows Phone, once again, they're not transparent at all because Microsoft just doesn't want to be transparent about their updates. So once again, you don't know when the update's coming around, what update is coming around when. And for some strange reason, they really like America right now. So the Lumi 920 in America has the latest update that fixes the fuzzy camera. But in the rest of the world, we don't have that update. Luckily, in India, the one good thing about the, de the delayed launch over here of the 920 is that it comes with the latest update, which fixes the camera fuzziness. So, so at the end of the day, who else can you recommend at this point? Yeah. So that sucks. <laughs> I just the, and see that's why that's exactly why I've just given up. And I'm done. <laughs> 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 oh dear God! <laughs> you would rather be with a phone that you know is not getting any more software updates. Than exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing to complain about. <laughs> this is as good as it's going to get. All right. Let's move on to apps of the week. Alvin, what's your app of the week? So for... my app of the week is Flickr, which is a Flickr client for um, Miro Hamatan and Symbian, I think. Um, it is, again, as with a lot of apps on Migo Hamilton and on Symbian, this is your only choice if you want Flickr <laughs> on your smartphone. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I have the free version, but there's also a paid one that, that gives you a bit more features and removes the ads. Um, you can view recent photos from your contacts. Pretty much everything that you have been accustomed to on the Flickr website, you can go to the Explore tab. Um, you can, of course, you can upload photos, even though you can also do it with the built-in share functionality on the N9. Um, you can also look at your contacts, including uh, the photos that your contacts have uploaded. So it's kind of like, uh, you, you kind of will be able to keep in touch with, with the photos that your contacts have posted in, in a nice grid like this. So it's, um, it, it's still it's different from the Flickr iOS app in the sense that the Flickr iOS app is now a lot like Instagram, but this still works like how Flickr used to to, to work, uh, especially on the desktop where the focus is really on photos and and on uh, and on your contacts rather than having a feed a continuously scrolling feed of your images. So. Um, Definitely, the the developer has definitely invested a lot of effort into this app, and even though the free version is fine, if you do like this app, you should buy the full version as well. It's interesting that Flickr has only updated their iPhone app and not the Android app and not the Windows Phone app. The Windows Phone app actually still says Windows a Flickr for Windows Phone Seven. <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is another problem with, with Windows Phone because you know if you're buying a Windows Phone, you're gonna be the odd man out because so and so app gets released for Android and iOS, but you don't know about Windows One. So <sighs> yeah, I mean, look at Vine. Vine, Vine is an example of the issue that still plagues Windows Phone and Android as well. <laughs> you know, yeah, because yeah. I mean, a new Temple... app comes out and it's iPhone only. Yeah, and then there's Temple Run, which come, came out on iPhone first, came out on Android a week later, but you still don't know if it's going to come to Windows Phone or not. Microsoft should be really, really charging after these people, but I don't know why they're not. Oh, Microsoft. Oh, well, speaking of Windows Phone, <laughs> <laughs> my app of the week is this thing called Cam Wow. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, it's a, if you've used Photo Booth on, the, um, on, a, on an iPad or an iPhone or even a Mac, this is kind of the same thing where, where you have these nice little fun filters that you can use to take pictures of your friends being silly. And um, if there's anything I noticed from Photo Booth, my friends like taking pictures of themselves acting silly. So this app has actually come in very useful on my Lumia phone, even though I'm not allowed to show you any of the pictures that my friends took with it. Um, so check it out. It's a free app. I think it's still free. Uh, called Camo. It has advertisements, but it's pretty fine. 
So that's our apps of the week. <laughs> and trust me, with, uh, with Migo and Windows Phone, it was pretty hard to find an app of the week. So give us some credit for trying, yeah? Um, <laughs> move on to uh, things we checked out this week. Alan has spent two months with the N9, and I challenged him to make a video that matched my video, my new video style, which I'll talk about in a while. And he did in one night. What the hell, man? <laughs> so, um, basically, I've already written a, a very long editorial uh, after one month with the N9, so two months later, I decided to, to just talk about um, what still impresses me about it. Um, and the video is five minutes long. It, it, I spend the entire night working on it, so that's how much I love you guys. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I've talked a lot about the N9 and, and how much I like it, and of course, of course, it doesn't make sense that I like it. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like, I'm like totally crazy for like it. But you know what? You can you can call me crazy, but at the end of the day, you are still pressing buttons on your Android phone to go back, and I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh, boy. you see, it. I don't care about what you think because um. On which other phone can you see that I have a new WhatsApp message on the screen when the display is off? There is no other phone that can do this. <laughs> oh, good times! I, I, I like I like that our site is now like read by Migo people. <laughs> so whenever Alvin publishes a post about the N9, we get really really positive comments about. It. About the N9, and then I realized, oh my god, I really need one of those phones. Damn it! Ah, it's too expensive right now in India. It's not sold officially here, so it's sold secondhand. Somebody just literally asked me on Twitter just now if I, they should buy an N9 in India, new or used. I would say if you can find a used one in good shape in India, go for it. If you can get a brand new one, you'll have to look at the price because it is really expensive here in the grey market. For the same price, you could probably buy a nice little Android phone. Don't but kill me see, out. Don't kill me you out. See, you can spend <laughs> money on an Android phone, but you'll be missing out on using the N9. <laughs> that is true. I mean, it is a, it is a sexy phone, and you can run Android on the N9 if you, you see, need it. It's yeah, you can get Android on the N9, but there's no point because <laughs> you lose everything that's special about the N9. All you are left with is a, is a low-end Android phone with a <laughs> shitty. CPU and not enough RAM <laughs> and in the end you you really there is a reason for getting the N9 over an Android phone that costs the same amount of money um, because the N9 is not something that you can replace you know um, the N9 is not something that that um, has a successor this is as good as Nokia is going to uh, let as, it get. As not just <laughs> going to let it get, you know, yeah, um, in terms yeah. of, of Linux on phones. And I think that when it comes to even, I reviewed Notekeeper for, for Migo Hamilton, which is an Evernote app earlier this week. And I think, you know, it's a fact that apps are still coming out for this phone. Um, we got Notekeeper and we just got a Soundhound client called Soundwave. And, and so, it isn't completely a barren land. Um, you can still get the N9 to fit your needs, and I have. Of course, I have also had to give up a few things that I used to have in order to fit my needs into the N9, but it is worth it, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, like every once in a while, I or Al will use Instagram on my, I'll use it on my iPad, or Al will use it on his on his um, Android phone or his iPhone, like, and then we, and then I see him liking something, and I'm like, oh look, I'll use his Android phone today for two seconds, <laughs> or I use my Android, iPad for two seconds today. Um, yeah, I, I guess if it works for you, like, who am I to talk? I'm using a Windows phone, and I'm very happy with it, and I can explain it to people, but it'll take like at least an half hour. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's move on to other stuff I reviewed. I reviewed this week. Haha, <laughs> I'm back, bitches. Sorry, tell me that. I was I was in a productivity slump because of the cold weather in Delhi, but the weather has gotten better. So I started 
being more productive. <laughs> um, this week I reviewed the uh, the Nokia Fat Boy wireless charging pillow. It looks really cute. Um, it's a little expensive though, so my conclusion on this was that if you want a wireless charger, you can get this cheap little one that you see over here. I, I laughed when or, I read the conclusion of your review because you said <laughs> that the Fat Boy wireless charging pillow is a luxury version of something that's luxury. <laughs> see, exactly. Now, see, this is this is the thing. This is the thing. Um, wireless charging is not a necessity right now. It's still a luxury. It's like owning a tablet. You don't need a tablet. Like you don't need a wireless charging, but it's nice to have. You know. Um, and that's the thing. Since wireless charging is a luxury itself, having the Fat Boy pillow is like a luxury and, version and, of something that is a luxury. And you have only. The difference in price between the basic wireless uh, charging pad and the Fat Boy is the cost of that pillow, because you're still exactly. using the pillow, the, the the pillow with the charging pad. Exactly, so. <laughs> and you could you could almost buy two wireless chargers for the cost of one Fat Boy pillow. And it's not that the pillow is a nice, because it is very nice. Like I it liked it nice. when I saw it, but. Um, <laughs> you need to spend money on these things. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, li like I said, this is for people who really want to show off that, hey, look, I have a very cool thing for my phone that I can just keep it on. Um, but I just, like, see, I, I personally would really want one because it looks cool, but I would not buy one. You know, over here, much... the Fat Boy pillow costs the same as the wireless charging stand that I reviewed uh, with the 820. So, I would say that you should actually get the stand if you are going to pay that much for a wireless charger because the stand actually allows your device to to to, to be docked and you can still use it uh, when it's docked and you can also um, use NFC with that stand. You can, there's an NFC chip inside. So I I would say I I would argue with that point and I would say get the Fat Boy charger, get an NFC sticker sticker on somewhere on the Fat Boy charger and you have the same thing. But then you need to buy the NFC sticker. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, or I, I, just, I like the concept of having a nice place for your phone to sleep when you go to bed at night. <laughs> but but I can see why it's kind a of... A nice pointless. place for your phone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like your phone is a safe. pet. <laughs> 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 uh, so yeah, moving on to other stuff I reviewed. The fat, I mean, you guys know what I think of the Fat Boy Pillow by this. Um, the I'm name like, is cute. I'll give you that. The name is cute. I'm a fat boy, so I'm really cute. Uh, but I also reviewed the Nokia JBL Power Up Speaker. This is this even thing more expensive. Is really expensive, but it is badass because it gets really loud. The audio quality is very typical JBL. Um, as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the little cute little Play, Play 360 speaker. And the Play 360 is also large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite large. I mean, yeah. it's large enough to carry around, but not large enough to carry around without a bag. <laughs> like you know, um, so this is really large, and you have to keep it plugged in because it has wireless charging and uh, yeah. NFC. You see, if, if you uh, if you are buying a speaker for your home, it makes sense. If you are buying, if you would get something like a big gem box, then this makes sense. Like yes, yeah, like see, if you want something that can wirelessly charge your phone and um, pair with it with using NFC to make initiate the process, um, this is very cool. Miriam from Engadget was just telling me that uh, it worked fine with her Nexus 4. For me, for some weird reason, it didn't work with my One X and the Galaxy S3 that I tried with it. I don't, I really don't know why. But it worked fine with the Nexus 4 uh, for Miriam. So I guess it does work with some Android devices. Wireless charging works with the Nexus 4, for example. Anything that supports the QI key. <laughs> wireless. Key, key? Wireless. yeah. Key. I just key, like key as in oh, key. key. Oh my god! Why didn't I know that from day one? Key. It's key. <laughs> I called it. I called it Chai Chi Key. Like I. I don't even know what I called it in the video. But anyway. Um. So yeah, we I so I think I think it is kind of worth the money if you have a Lumia 920 or anything that can wirelessly charge. If you don't have something that can wirelessly charge, then this is the only speaker around right now in the high end segment of speakers that has NFC built in. And once again, out of that, 
only very few devices in so, so far in my experience works with the uh, JBL's NFC. So I would say if you have to buy a speaker, there's the Bose SoundLink, which in my opinion has better bass. But if you have a Lumia phone or an X4 or you want or something that has wireless charging and you really really want to use it with a dock, this is the only alternative you have. And you see, um, these accessories um, work best if you have a phone by the same manufacturer. So if you have a Lumia, you would probably be able to, to enjoy this a lot more than if you had any other phone. It's the same as with the BH221 that, that I have here. Um, it works best with the N9 because I can just pair it by tapping on it. So, and then technically, technically, it works best with Symbian. <laughs> it works but, best hey. with Symbian, which <laughs> is ironic still. Um, but if you have any other um, kind of phone from any other manufacturer or running any other platform, it's probably best to get and get some other brand of, of speaker that is more. I have no idea what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> like all the bad karma of Symbian and Samsung are like attacking me. Whenever I say something bad about either of them, I get cut. Um, well, so, yeah. Nokia Drive Plus was released for the HTC 8X on the HTC 8X and for any actually, Windows Phone 8 device. Yeah, this week. and now this is the thing. This is the interesting thing. It's only released for the US, the UK, and Canada. But so, there's a trick that you can use to get this if you are in any other country. Just on your Windows Phone device, go to region and language, change the country setting. <laughs> to yeah, <laughs> and, but 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 then, then you need a US SIM card or a UK SIM card. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah look, ah. they're smart. They're smart. They're smart. They got you. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. So so what happened is I was using. Um, I have an Indian SIM card in my HTC 8X that I was trying to use to review this, and it wouldn't work. It would just say that you know the SIM card you've entered isn't valid, and I was like, huh. Well, I do remember this only being released for the US and the UK. Let me try it with a US SIM card. So I tried it with a US SIM card that I have, and um, it worked fine. <laughs> like it worked fine. But then the, the minute my US SIM card realized it was on roaming and it connected to an Indian network, um, Nokia Drive just stopped working immediately oh, on my phone. Oh, come on. Come so, on. So this, <laughs> so this is literally only for people in the US, in yeah. the UK, and Canada. So and this rest, is, rest of world you need not apply. And this is released by Microsoft, not by, by Nokia, technically. I, technically. I have a theory. Perhaps... Microsoft paid Nokia to release this app for in these countries. They should so, pay Nokia for releasing because this Because they app. have not paid Nokia to release it worldwide. It's not available worldwide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would make sense. And to be honest, Nokia should be paid for, paid for, the, for this service because it is pretty but good. Come on, man. Why is Windows Phone so region-specific? I you don't know. That you I want, hate it. You uh, s Microsoft and Nokia says that all the time that they want look, to bring look. Windows Phone into other markets than, you know. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about. If I hit the Bing search button on this, I only have one icon here, one icon for Bing Vision. But if you watch any of the Windows Phone ads, they talk about um, Bing search local being so Scout. awesome and local scout and Bing music and this and that. All I have is one freaking icon because I'm in India. But Bing and Local Scout is something that works anywhere. And what? in we've already gone over the artist images and exports music uh, thing. Just, no, and I, <laughs> that pisses me off because come on, man, it is a picture of an artist. It's like why do I need rights in order to view artist images when I can go on Wikipedia and view the artist image? Now see, now now look at this. Okay, Nokia Music pulls in those artist images. 
just fine. So if it, this is a huge issue f for Microsoft, why not pull in those artist I images from Nokia Music? I it's mean, they have not inked the correct dis uh, <laughs> agreement to do so. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pissing off. It annoys me. Like you know, there's, there's nothing that annoys me more than re regional restrictions because yeah. we <laughs> live in an age nowadays. We live in an age nowadays where we're all on the internet. The internet is not a region. It is the internet. No one and should be locked down if on it. You have an iPhone. You have everything. <laughs> you you have everything even in Asia because there are iTunes stores in Asia now. So. Uh. So I mean, even even I remember even the iPhone had some silly regional restrictions. Like for example, you can't download Vivo. You also can't download Vivo on Windows Phone, but you can use the trick that Alvin mentioned to change your store to yeah. US, download the app, and then change it back. But, but that's Vivo's business, not you know, the, yeah, that's the Vivo's Apple's thing. But yeah. but for some weird reason, you can't download Google Earth in India on an iPhone. Yeah, Google I don't like... understand <laughs> why. Is that is that the same thing for you? Yes, yeah, I, I mean, can't download Google Earth either. I've never seen it. I know. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 don't let the Asians download Google Earth. It's bad. Let them use Google <laughs> Maps, which is the same thing. <laughs> it frustrates me. Uh, so, yeah, that's how we same feel about Google regional. Play, by the way. Come on, Google. Step out your game. I mean, we should have the ability to buy books as well. I mean, I don't understand. I just don't understand. I just, <laughs> I'm sure there's some big legal explanation for this. But right now, if you're, using, if you're using a smartphone in Asia, all the three smartphone operating systems are made in America right now. iOS and Windows Phone and Android, they're all made in America, probably by Asian engineers, I might and add. Honestly, but still. <laughs> if, you, if you want an experience that's not compromised uh, because of region, the iPhone is the best way to go because you have access to everything that Apple does. You can use iCloud, you can use everything that they offer. And iOS yeah. is the same no matter where you are. I just think, I just think Microsoft is... is Focusing on the U.S. so much that they're gonna end up pissing off a lot of other regions. They're already starting to piss me off. Um, <laughs> the regional restrictions, but oh well. So yeah, that's Nokia Drive Plus. European <laughs> mobile OS. <laughs> European, yeah. I mean, they were the cool, fair people. They were like, oh, we'll be fair to all the regions. Oh well. So that's Nokia Drive. That's how our. <laughs> so it's irrelevant. <laughs> it's as irrelevant as the surface. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. Um, okay, so let's move on to our last piece. Now, this is something that we literally did in one day because I suddenly got an idea because I'm so productive now. <laughs> I was like, hey, everybody, send me the best pictures you've taken with a mobile phone. Mike sent two pictures <laughs> with his N9. But um, we have a huge collection of the best pictures we've taken with a mobile phone so far. As you can see, there's some pretty good ones in here. Yash's pictures are amazing. He started taking pictures all the way from the N97, uh, from the N73. N73. And like this picture really, I looked at it and I was like, wow. Back in those days, this is like a three-year-old or four-year-old phone and these pictures are amazing. And even today, you still look, kind of barely have cameras that can do this. Um, but the whole point of the piece was that you know what, the chances are that if you have a mid-range or high mid-range phone nowadays, um, you can probably take some pretty nice pictures with it. Just go out and take some pictures and still listen to everyone complain about how bad cameras are nowadays. And if you and if you read the post, you'll notice that most of the phones in that post are not your devices, except and for the X10. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, there's, the, there's the iPhone mentioned in some place. Yeah, I mean, and they were mostly Symbian <laughs> phones as well. So now this is the thing. This is the legacy that Nokia has, camera, you know? So when they released the Lumia 800 and the Lumia 900 with a terrible camera, I was shocked. <laughs> I was literally shocked at how bad. This was like worse than EDOF, you know? Um, oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's not go. Let's not go. <laughs> okay. EDOF. EDOF is hell. It is... A uh, camera technology that deserves to rot in hell. So and... for, so for <laughs> all of you wondering what EDOF is, it's basically a fixed focus camera that it, Nokia was using. It with their is device. the result of Nokia trying to cut cost 
with Symbian 3 devices, with Symbian 3 hardware. And they used it only on their business devices, like the E7 and the E5, X7. I think? Yeah, the X7. E7, X7, E52. <laughs> Basically, they were like, oh, you know, business people don't take pictures. <laughs> so and the C601, just... the C7, the 701, the 700, the 603, all great devices <laughs> ruined utterly by that stupid camera. It's a stupid camera. You might so, as well get a Blackberry. <laughs> I think that's why people didn't buy a Blackberry in those days. <laughs> oh boy. No, okay. I mean, they made some horrible mistakes back in the day. They made resistive touchscreens and EDF screens. And I just cameras. love how there were people who defended this horrible camera technology. <laughs> it is a technology that is designed expressly to cut costs, not to not to push the boundaries of what is possible, not to create even better photos, but to cut costs. And I just remember people from Nokia coming out to defend that technology. And look where it is now. <laughs> no one is using EDOF. There's exactly. no single compact camera that has EDOF in it because one argument that people made about EDOF back then is that, well, it's easier for normal people to use ER. And then what happened? No. Is, no. And then. I mean, I mean, look come at on. Compact see, cameras. Look, exactly. They are for I normal mean, people. <laughs> There's resistive factories, EDOF. <laughs> Two of the biggest mistakes Nokia made so far. If they had. I mean, even if they had capacitive touch and, back then. Oh, and you still forgot Symbian. SMB5. No, no, no. Even if they had capacitive screens back then, I think, I think Symbian would have done slightly better. Oh, it, come on. Double I mean, tap if to select. Had, like with a capacitive touchscreen, it could have been like a nice double tap instead of a tap with your fingertip. Way, like, but come um, on. Double tap to select. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We're so old. We've been through so many phones. <laughs> And so, scrolling yeah. with a stupid scroll bar at the side of the screen. <laughs> uh, we've been through a lot of phones. And damage. options menus. I miss the options menu. They were so cute. Like pop up with all these options. <laughs> kind of have them on, on Android right now. But uh. So yes, that is our show for today. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we both are. We, we both can talk a lot. Even, <laughs> Even when we've been abandoned by everyone else, where is everybody else gone? <laughs> uh, so that's our show. Let us know what you think of our best pictures taken so far, because we really did um, put together our best pictures. I think most people love cats. The most. I know. So this is the funny thing. Okay, this is I fo almost forgot this. Thanks for reminding me. Now this is why I wanted to talk about cats. <laughs> in today's show. <laughs> the most click-through picture that I've taken so far in that whole post, I have a lot of beautiful pictures in that post, in my opinion. And the most click-through picture was a picture of a cat I took with the Lumia 920. I mean, come on, internet. Seriously. <laughs> a picture of a cat. I have, like, all these beautiful pictures, and you click... Uh. <laughs> oh, well, that's about it. So that's our show. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we've been of some use to you today with our <laughs> mindless banter going all over the place. Um, <laughs> and let us know what you think in the YouTube comments below. If you have an opinion, share it in the YouTube comments. Um, and thanks for watching. It's Alvin, and it's me, and hopefully next week we'll have more people when they come back, because I'm going to go yell at them on WhatsApp right now. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.